I would like to go over bitmap rigging and also some file organization. I made this little animation for the 4th of July and um, it's just using one layer that was illustrated in Photoshop. I did some frame by frame animation here. Um, but I want to show you how I rigged it and I also want to show you how I would rig it if I had a if I would have had more time. There are two methods that I'm going to show you here. So let's start with Photoshop. Here are two images. They're, they look the same, but really they're different. So one, one of them has just one layer. So I just traced a, a sketch I did in Photoshop. I did some coloring and it's just one layer. You can see there's only one layer here. Okay. The second one is the same basic artwork, but I cut it up. And this is what I would recommend if you have somebody creating artwork for you, or you're going to think ahead and create artwork for yourself, break it apart if you can. So we got a shoulder, we got a bicep, forearm, hand. It's the same thing. I also made a second hand for when the when these um, Roman candles are going to blow up the anticipation of them exploding. So break it up if you can. It's, it's going to create a little more um, articulation for your joints. But first, let's talk about organization. Um, I have a folder here on my desktop. Um, this is kind of how I organize things. I have typically inside of a folder, which I've named bitmap, bitmap rigging, uh, I have four or five folders. One sound, and this is for maybe an After Effects project. Ideas for the video, maybe colors or sketches. Graphics that I might make in Illustrator. Footage that would come from maybe an anime studio or some other outside source. And then an animation folder that I would put all my anime studio files in. And then I would put images that are linked to those animation files in here along with sounds. It's kind of like a website or working with InDesign where you have relative... Uh, paths. And if you put something in a folder and then you move it later, you can cause yourself some real problems. So get organized first and save your files and don't move them around after you do that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second here. So let's go ahead and save our files. I'm going to start with this one here. I'm going to save it to bitmap rigging, animation, and then images. Save. And do the same thing for this one. It's already in the same folder. Just make sure you name them different. Okay. Go ahead and quit Photoshop. And let's go take a look at our folder. Should be animation, images, and our two Photoshop files are there. Okay. Let's get into Anime Studio. In Anime Studio, I'm going to make a new file. And I'm going to check my settings here. Let's go ahead and make this 1400 by 1200. I'm going to actually go with a frame rate of 8 frames per second. I like experimenting with that. I'd encourage you to do the same. Uh, it's more of a square, so kind of an Instagram sort of animated GIF is what I'm going for. Uh, what I can do is I can just drag and drop my Photoshop files onto my canvas. So let's start with the easy one, the one layer. So I'm just going to drag my Photoshop file there. Um, it doesn't give me any, any messages at all because it's just one layer. Um, the next one will do something different. I can delete layer one and I can make this layer smaller, maybe around around there. Okay, I'm gonna save my file. So remember, I like to save my files in the animation folder, not in images, just kind of here. That's where I'm gonna put it. And if I was smart, I would call it something very similar to what I called the Photoshop fire, uh, file. Arm underscore one layer. Okay, so to look, take a look at my organization and animation, I have my anime studio file and then the images are here. I'm not going to move them once I save them because you're going to cause yourself some issues if you do move them around. How to rig this thing? It's one layer. It's kind of difficult, um, but you can do it. So let's put this in a folder, new group with selection, and let's just call this arm. You right click, convert to bone. And now with your add bone tool, I'm gonna to make kind of a torso bone and then a shoulder. And then I'm gonna start drawing some bones where I think they might be. I've done this before, so I know that I need a hand coming up here. I'm gonna recolor those so you can see them. Let's go with green. Okay, cool. So when you draw bones, they, they start with this uh, force field sort of thing. Um, and that's all we're gonna be using. That's flexi binding. 
So that's really all we're relying on because we only have one layer. So you have to kind of make that work. Um, my torso, I don't need anything. And my shoulder, I shouldn't need a whole lot uh, either, but I'm going to put a little bit of strength on there. I'm just going to kind of size these things based on the size of my artwork. Um, and you'll, you'll just have to play with it, see, see what works for you. Something around there. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this bone, basically, by going, uh, selecting it with my Select Bone tool, going to Bone Constraints, and then checking the angle constraints and just I'm going to set that to zero and zero so it doesn't move it's kind of like locking um, and you can start playing with this thing right away manipulate bone or Z you can start seeing all right well we got some decent movement here um, the problem with you can see this right away the problem with this uh, if I hold option down I can move just one one bone at a time is when you start bending it way too far starts kind of looking <laughs> not kind of it looks horrible so it's limited but we can get a lot out of this for just a little bit of work maybe i dial those back a little bit so it's not stretching okay so we're to the point where where this is okay another thing you can do is i'm going to select this bone and i'm going to check squash and stretch and set that to two so if i were to go on my timeline this bone will um, stretch the artwork that is using that little force field or that flexi binding area. It's not going to squash, squash and stretch anything else, but it's kind of cool. So if you wanted some sort of recoil, like it was like the Roman candles were blowing up, you know, you could squash and stretch, and then poof, and they, they could fire like that. Let's take a look at a final file that I made with some frame by frame animation, and you can download these files um, to inspect as you like. This is one I worked on for a while. Um, so I did a little bit of squash and stretch on this bone here. Um, I, th I thought about anticipation of the actual firework going off. Um, the shoulder, I put a little bit of a constraint on the shoulder so it doesn't move a whole lot. Um, I'd encourage you to download this file and take a look at it. I also did um, a burst with some frame by frame animation. Uh, the word Merka disappearing and then a just a red background so we got a lot out of this file without breaking it up a whole lot but it's got its limitations so the next style will have a little bit more freedom and articulation in the joints so the second method i'm going to do the same thing make a new file double check that um, i have my dimensions how i want them my frame rate all that good stuff come in to my images folder and I'm going to drag and drop the arm separated Photoshop file and I'm going to get a different dialogue here I have layers so I can bring them in all sorts of ways I want them individually brought in again I can delete layer one and what's cool is they make a folder for you so I can just convert that to a bone right away I am also going to make this smaller around there Okay, <clears throat> first off, I'm going to turn these two into a switch layer. So I'm going to group those together and call this hand. Right click, convert to switch. Whatever's on top is going to be the one you're going to see right away. Okay, so we have <clears throat> all of our layers. Let's rig this a little differently. Since we have separate layers, we can do, we have a little more flexibility. So going to your bone layer. A for add bone. I'm going to do the same kind of skeletal structure. We got a torso, we got a shoulder, we got a bicep, we got a forearm, and we got a hand. Okay, here is your, here's, here's how I would go about it. So again, um, with, with your um, bones, you'll have all this bone strength. So I can bring those down to zero right there if I select all my bones. I don't need bone strength particularly in this case, but I'll show you an option where you can use it in tandem with the uh, uh, bind layer tool. All right, so you go to your layer, grab your bind layer tool, and you bind it. Let's make these green so we can see them. And 
Okay, so again, you select your layer, grab your bind tool, and you bind it. And it'll turn bright red. So I'm just doing that with the entire switch layer. Um, you wouldn't do it with each individual switch layer. You would just do it with the, the actual folder. Okay, forearm. I'm going to come through and bind that. Bicep. Bind that. Body. And I'm going to bind that. Um, again, I'm going to I'm going to limit how this can move. I'm going to limit that to zero, zero. Uh, I think in my final files I have these limited to like negative three, three. So they move a little bit. And if you start moving things around with your uh, manipulate bone tool, um, you can see that, that things are working pretty well um, already. The joints are working pretty well. And what's great is that is I, I can I can have things overlap and there's no stretching or distortion or any craziness. Um, one thing you may try is reordering. What if we put the the bicep below the body? Um, okay, sure. That that seems to be working um, right there. Cool. You could set you know squash and stretch for any of these, but it's a lot more clean, especially when you're bending the arm. You know, if you bend it too far, you might have to go back in and clean up some things, but there's a lot more flexibility. It looks a lot more polished and finished um, with this style as well. <clears throat> Here's an alternative. If you wanted to, let's say the body and the bicep, you wanted those to be a little more um, more of that flexi binding look rather than just, just attached to one, one layer, you could do that as well. So what I would do is I would select the bones. I'm gonna select these two bones and I'm going to use those two and their bone strength, which I turned off, and I'm going to turn them back on. So you can go to your bone strength or press um, S and turn them back on. And I'm going to kind of encapsulate the, the artwork there. Okay, so I have both bones selected. I'm going to go to the body, and I'm going to go to bone, um, use selected bone for flexi binding or that keyboard shortcut. They both turn red. I'm going to do the same thing for the bicep. Oops, there we go. And now they move a little differently. They're they're more joined together. So, but this one, the elbow is is uh, bound to the layer where the bicep is using both bones to move. So that's kind of a cool alternative to to uh, combine. If you wanted to release that, you select the bones. Actually, you go to the body or the bicep, and you go use all bones for a flexi binding, and it will release those layers. That took me a while to figure out. So you gotta use all bones for flexi binding, and it will release them. And then you can go back in and and rebind them if you want to. So lots of options. Uh, let's take a look at what a final one looks like. And uh, don't forget to save your file, which I have not done. I'm gonna call that, let's call it arm separate inside of my animation folder. Okay, cool. So here's the final file that has the separated layers. The, the main difference is, again, the, the way the, the joints move, they're nice and smooth. Um, they have, you know, the elbow and the shoulder. They, they just look nicer. Also, I can overlap and I can get a little bit more movement out of it. The second thing is the, the switch layer. Um, we're switching from this normal Roman candle to a that second drawing that I made um, where they look like they're anticipating an explosion. So I'm, I'm switching from that to the normal one. Um, so it's just a different way to do it. The first version I did a squash and stretch and it looks pretty good. And then I'm setting up cycles. So I cycled the switch layer for the hand. I also cycled all of the animation for the, the arm it's, as well. So you can see it's a very similar result. I like this method better. I think it's more finished and it has a lot more control, especially if you wanted to continue with this rig and use it later on down the road. So I hope these methods were helpful. Please download the files and use them how you like. Um, and remember to stay organized with your, with your files. You don't want to move things around afterwards. Uh, happy animating.